it down the left field line. It is gone! Live from the downtown Carmi studio, it's the Saturday Morning Sports Show. Live on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROI, and online worldwide at WRUL.com. Good morning, sports fans, and welcome to the Saturday Morning Sports Show here on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROI, AM 1460, and online worldwide at WRUL.com. Cole Carter and Travis Black with you. Haley Winkleman across the hall getting us on the air. The sports show is brought to you by Rice Motor Company, Cherry Street Automotive, Citizens National Bank, Nancy J. Winter CPA, First Med Bank and Trust, Hale Body Shop, World Work Transport, Ferrell Hospital, Little Giant Grocery Outlet, Jordan Funeral Group, Walmash Christian Therapy, Bush and Associates CPAs, Taylor Eye Care, People's National Bank, Hamilton Memorial Hospital, Rush Appliance, Wabash General Hospital, Boomtown Solar Energy, First Bank, and Carmi Lumber. Well, last night, the Carmel White County Bulldogs, a big 11-point win on the road at Fairfield, 51-40. to Carmel led the entirety of the game ever since it was 5-2 to there in the first quarter. Uh, but Travis, Carmel played a really good first half, I thought, led by 17 at the break. Fairfield got back within six at one point early in the fourth, but the Bulldogs took care of the ball, made their free throws, and got a big win in a place that's tough to win. Yeah, they they did an outstanding job on Eric Rogers in the first half. You know, only allowing him to have four points offensively. They worked the ball inside, and they were shooting eighty percent there in the second quarter. They did an extremely good job at passing the ball, moving, cutting. And taking what the defense gives them, not forcing too many things. In the third quarter, they started to force a little bit, started the turnover bug, started to creep in. But by the end of the fourth, they did what they needed to do. They hung on to the ball, didn't make any uh, stupid passes, and made their free throws. I thought you made a good point, as in Carmine didn't really force anything there in that first half. A lot of the shots came right at the rim. Uh, Carmine did a good job of feeding the ball in the post. And, you know, I kind of thought Fairfield had some size, 6'2", 6'3", down low, and thought that was going to make things tough for Carmine uh, at the basket. Bryce Connor has been so good in the past couple of games going at the rim, but last night it was no different. He was very strong going to the basket. Rather, it was getting an offensive rebound and going back up or a, a good post feed from one of his point guards. Uh, I thought he did an outstanding job. Uh, I'd say 90% of his points came from the ba- uh, right at the basket last night. Yeah, he had 10 points in that first half, and all of them were basically layups. I mean, he did a, he did a good job at getting inside position on some of those bigger guys. He got he got Lane Tucker in foul trouble pretty early on in the game and kind of took him out of the first half, really. And uh, the guards did a good job of getting in the ball. Landon Driscoll did a good job at cutting at the right moments, you know, getting inside and getting some easy points. And, I mean, the whole team did a good job at, you know, really attacking the basket and forcing, you know, Fairfield to really come out of that zone defense and, you know, guard man-to-man because there's holes in that zone defense and they were working inside beautifully. Bryce Connor led the team in scoring with 14 points. Mitchell Edwards had 12. Uh, Tyler Gomat and Gavin Holloman both had 8. And Landon Driscoll had 9 points last night for the Bulldogs. Carmine only made... Th- three three-point shots in the whole night, and that was kind of rare to me, Travis, because this is a team that you know likes to shoot the ball from beyond the arc, and I, they just didn't shoot the ball outside in general last night a whole lot. It was a lot of going towards the rim, and especially in the second half, taking care of the ball, working things around, and just trying to get layups. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of that's game, that's credit to Fairfield's game plan of really holding the ball out, so they they really couldn't get up and down and you know shoot the transition threes like they like to. But they would take the three if it was available once defense collapsed and uh, kick it out. But they were really focused on you know controlling the paint. And so here is what Kevin Wolf had said last night after the Bulldogs fifty-one to forty win over Fairfield. And coach, you guys played a pretty good first half there in the third quarter. They got back into it, but late in the game, you guys took care of the ball, made your free throws, and got a win in a very tough place to win games. Yeah, uh, credit to the guys. I told them at halftime, um, Fairfield's been doing a lot of that lately. They were down 14 against Olney, uh, fought their way back. The Rogers kid is just such a good scorer, and um, they played some good games. Uh, played Benton in an overtime game, played a really good Olney team. We beat, who won the Pinckneyville tournament. That's very similar to El Dorado's. Uh, they're a good team. Like I said, Coach Malcolm does a good job. They're going to do whatever it takes um, to win, and that's getting Rodgers the ball. And he's really good. Uh, we lost him a few times. We didn't have a, our hands up enough, I didn't think, on him. We didn't kind of um, – he's good. I'm not going to say we did anything bad. We, we just he, – he made a ton of shots. Um, but I thought we got a little out of sorts offensively a little bit at times and, and maybe took some quick shots, uh, just didn't um, – needed somebody to step up and just take care of that basketball there late, get us into our stuff. Um, 
calm the guys down a little bit. Uh, but, you know, anytime you go on the road and win, especially in a place like Fairfield, uh, that's still a good basketball team. They've lost some games this year, but they're still really well coached. They've got some good players. So anytime you go on the road and win, um, that's all that really matters. And we did that. Um, got to 5-0 and in the conference, which was something we talked a little bit about going through the first five games. And um, couldn't be more proud of the guys. Um, ready for the CIT. Going to be a tough week, but uh, going to enjoy this um, today. I think last night your brother had the same problem because you know, when you have a lead in the fourth quarter, it's hard to, to balance taking care of the basketball, yes. airing the ball out, but then you don't want to be too aggressive. And you mentioned the guys. A couple of the quick shots there. How hard is it to preach to these guys, these high schoolers, that when you <laughs> had that lead in the you fourth quarter? You said it right there, <laughs> high school kids. Like they, you got to take care of the ball. And that's our job as coaches to, to teach them you know, time and situation and all that. But it's tough. The crowd's going crazy. You know, we're winning. They're looking up. Oh, coach, we're up seven or eight. You know, but, man, they just – um, to win big games, you know, that we're hoping to play, like we talked about earlier on in the year. I mean, every possession matters, um, and it really magnifies there in the fourth quarter whenever things get tight. Uh, we need somebody to just get the guys together, calm things down, get the ball where it needs to get to, and then when we do, we have a good time scoring. But I just thought we, we got a little impatient there. Um, but like I said, a win's a win, and we did what we had to do. We rebounded well there um, at the stretch. Um, they came after us. It looked very similar to what I saw on film, what they did against Olney. Boy, Rogers just gets it going, and he's hard to stop. Uh, but, no, got to win. Proud of them. You're right. We're, we're dealing with 15 to, to 17, 18-year-old kids here. And, um, but the guys battled, and, and then they responded at times, and, and we, we got the win, which is really um, what matters. I thought there in the first half you guys did a good job of getting the ball to Bryce down in the post. I mean, yep. he scored, uh, I think, about 10 of his 14 points came in the first half yep. just right at the basket. Rather, it was an offensive rebound or a good pass in the post. And with their size, thought you guys might have some trouble, but I thought he did a great job yep. scoring down low. Yeah, I was worried about that. Coming here, then playing the zone, I was worried about scoring inside with Duff Duckworth being in there and Tucker being in there, they're big. And, um, you know, they're height-wise and they're good, strong boys in there too. So uh, I was a little bit worried about it, but Bryce, um, he's a beast in there. He played really well in that first half. Um, then they kind of pressured us a little bit, um, and it bothered us some, you know, and, and th that's a credit to them. Um, but, no, Bryce inside scored. Um, Gomat got around the bucket, I think, a few times and scored. We made our free throws down the stretch, and, th and that was big because they were never able to get back in it when they were having to foul us. Um, I thought Gavin Holloman played one of his better games yep. uh, tonight. I mean, the hustle play, I kind of got on to him a little bit, but that's just a sophomore hustling his butt off there, and it led to a five-on-four, which, which they got a three. But um, that's just another situational spot for him. He was geared up. He was on Rodgers. He was going to get him. Bout had a steal. Um, but, no, it showed – I mean, you saw his lateral quickness a little bit whenever he was out there guarding. Um, did a good job. All of them did. Um, winning on the road in the conference is tough. And, and I'm proud of the guys for coming up here and getting that win. You guys got two days off, but then it's really a gauntlet next week Heck at yeah, home for is. the CIT. Four really good teams uh, that you guys are going to see, but starting on Monday with Harrisburg, what we know about that? Oh, they're getting better and better. Yep. Uh, new coach in there. Um, I'm sure their players kind of had to, to feel him out um, versus what they've had forever down there in Smith-Peters. Um, played, played good at the EHT. Um, they're a good basketball team. They're going to be patient. Um, I talked to a coach from the river to river, and he told me they play like a Black Diamond team. They want to grind it out just like a Fairfield does, just like a Hamilton County does, just like we like to do at times. You know, the river, they like to get it up and down and see as many shots as they can. And, but, but Harrisburg's more of a BDC style is what I've taught, a coach told me. Um, so it could play into our hands a little bit because that's what we're used to. Um, they're going to pass it, pass it, pass it. They're going to try to get the Andy kid a shot, and they're going to try to get it inside to some big kids that they have. Point guard's a nice player. Um, so we'll, we'll have our work cut out for us. But it's always fun playing in our own tournament. It's such a blessing to, to have – um, the Carmi tournament, it's been there for 40-some-odd years now. Um, getting to play four home games in a row um, in our tournament is very nice. We're going to have a great crowd um, every night. I know we are, so, so we're ready for it, but it's going to be really, really tough. And, uh, but the guys are prepared. Um, give, them, give them off all weekend, and then uh, we'll have a walkthrough Monday to, to really get ready for them, and then mm, here we go. All right, going to win the night. Coach, thanks for your time. We'll talk Appreciate to you next it. Thanks, week. Thanks, fellas. That's Kevin Wolf Bulldogs. That was went Kevin Wolf 51 to 40 yes. over Fairfield. Win number 13 on the year. Okay, there we go. Okay, <laughs> that was Kevin Wolf last night after the Bulldogs defeat Fairfield on the road 51 to 40. Carmine improves to 13 and 4 on the season, 5 and 0 in the BDC. And Travis, you heard Kevin say it. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to win these first few games in the conference. They've now uh, beat everybody they've seen on the east side of, of the BDC. But now you're going to get into the time of the year where you're playing them a second time around. You're going to have to go, you know, two floor. After going to go to El Dorado, uh, and, and those are two places, tough places to win. But uh, two other teams that are also very improving. But still, regardless, 5 and 0 in your first five conference games. That's a good way to start the year. Yeah, that's a good way for any team to start the year. When you can go 5-0 and in your conference, I mean, you've gotten a win over everyone in the conference. You've shown you're 
one of the best teams in the conference, the best team in the conference so far. And it's going to be tough going to the, you know, Flora, the El Dorados, and those are two teams that, you know, were, had a couple guys out when we played them uh, first time around. So it's going to be a tough challenge, but I think uh, Carmine's up to it. Other scores in the area last night in the BDC. El Dorado defeats Edwards County 61-37. to And an interesting note for El Dorado, we thought their big man, Boston Bradley, was going to face a season-ending injury. Uh, that's not the case. He played both games they played this week, and he scored 18 points in both games this week. So he's back to full strength. El Dorado almost back to complete full strength. They will be a handful when Carmine plays there next month. Florida defeats Hamilton County by four. 49 to 45 in the BDC West. Cesar over Ziegler Royalton, 55 to 40. Johnson City over Trico, 54 to 43. Goreville, a 10 point win over Christopher, 61 to 51. In the <clears throat> Greater Egyptian Conference, Crab Orchard over Galatia, 85 to 62. Pope County over Hardin County, 50 33. And NCOE over Carrier Mills, 61 to to 43 in the Little Lionai Conference, Mount Carmel a big road win against Albany, 33-29. Casey Westfield gets past Marshall, 61 to 42, and Lawrenceville all over Newton, 82 to 60. The Midland Trail Sisney defeats Grayville, 86 to 75. In the River to River, Nashville over AJ. 69 to 44. Carterville puts up 93 points against Duke Coin. 93 to 42. The final score there. Heron defeats Harrisburg 60 47. Massac County over West Frankfurt 74 to 51. And Murfreesboro seven point win over Benton 41 or 48 to 41. A couple of non-conference games. Viana over Joppa, Maple Grove 87 to 46. Thompsonville over Century 67 to 51. Robinson over Evansville Bossy 71 to 68. It's about all the relevant boys high school basketball scores from last night. But uh, we mentioned Travis, we'll talk about the CIT here in a minute, but if you look at Carmi's second time around with the conference coming up here after the CIT. Uh, again, you're going to have to go to El Dorado. Very tough place to play. I'm going to go to Flora. A very tough place to play. Uh, and and, and Carmi's seen those teams the first time around in conference play. I know we lost to El Dorado in the EHT, but it doesn't really hurt us in terms of conference record. But two tough teams to play against, especially with El Dorado now. They're going to be back to full health when Carmi sees them next month. Yeah, and they've also played them, you know, El Dorado twice. So they've seen almost everything. Carmine likes to run offensively and defensively. So at this point, it's just going to be a battle of who wants it more. You're going to know all the X's and O's. That there might be a wrinkle you can throw in here in practice, but for the most part, they're going to understand what you want to what you want to do offensively, what you want to do defensively. So it's going to come down to who can execute better and who wants it more. And again, Carmine now five and zero in the BDC East. They stay atop of the conference, but. Uh, we'll see if that stays the same when we get to the middle of February uh, and so on and so forth, closer to regional time. But with that, next Monday is the beginning of the 43rd Annual Carmi White County Invitational Tournament. It's going to be a lot of good basketball next week, and we'll get to that when we come back right here on the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL and 93.3 WROY. Welcome back to the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROY, and AM 1460. Cole Carter and Travis Black with you as we now look ahead to next week's 43rd annual Carmi White County Invitational Tournament that starts on Monday. And a lot of good basketball going to be played at McDougal Levers next week. Five really good basketball teams a uh, part of this year's tournament. Travis, we made the point last Saturday. I think this year's CIT field is as even and as up for grabs as it has been in a couple of years. Yeah, this is probably the most level playing field there's been. Most of the time you got those one to two teams. It used to be Mount Carmel, it used to be Harrisburg, and they're still, you know, good contenders. Mount Carmel's of course out of it now. They have their conference tournament this week. But Mount Vernon are returning champs. Evansville Day School, they got a puncher's chance with Tyler Myers who can go for fifty plus. We've seen that a couple different times uh at the CIT and then in regular season games. Um, Fairfield's getting better. They played extremely well last night, and they made a comeback there in the second half. And they're down 17, cut it all the way down to you know five to six points. And they got a puncher's chance with Eric Rogers. You can go for 30. You know he had 24 in the second half last night. Cameron Andy and the Harrisburg Bulldogs are dangerous. Andy can go for 20 plus in the second half. So the, this is a very evenly 
uh, even playing field, and this is probably the deepest tournament the CIT has been in a long time. Yeah, you made a good point, man. Harrisburg really just sticks out to me because if you look at the EHT and kind of their resume, they were not seeded of the EHT uh, this year. Technically, they were given the nine seed. They upset Hamco in the first round, took Heron to overtime in the second round before losing in the fifth place bracket to a very good Carterville team. But you know, we, we always check their scores every Saturday morning, Travis, and a big one over Benton a couple weeks ago, a big one over Murfreesboro, a close loss last night against Heron. But they're just one of those teams that, especially with a guy like Cameron Andy, we saw it last night with Eric Rogers. When you let one guy get going in the second half, and Andy, who scored 24 more points tonight in their loss uh, last night against Heron, if he gets going, he's going to give Carmine some trouble. Yeah, I mean, he's a kid who can heat up for 30 very quickly, and he's one of the best players in Southern Illinois. Illinois and only just a junior. Uh, he's he can score at all three levels, can shoot the three, you know, pull up mid range, you know, driving layups, and he can hit his free throw. So he's just a tough ass to guard. But the way Carmine's been playing defense over the last, you know, three games before that Fairfield game, and I'll give him a half for the Fairfield <laughs> game because you know Eric Rogers went for twenty four. But when a kid gets hot like that, it's kind of hard to stop. But Carmine's been playing better defense, and I think they'll have a good chance at slowing him down on Monday night. Looking at the schedule for next week, CIT it does again start on Monday at 5.30. It'll be Fairfield and Evansville Day. Then at 7 o'clock, Carmine against Harrisburg. Then on Tuesday at 5.30, Harrisburg and Fairfield. And then Evansville Day against Mount Vernon, Indiana at 7 o'clock. All teams will have Wednesday night off. On Thursday, the 19th, it is Harrisburg against Evansville Day at 5.30. Carmine and Mount Vernon at 7. Then on Friday, Mount Vernon and Harrisburg at 5.30. Carmine and Fairfield at 7. And then on Saturday, no Saturday morning session this year, just Saturday night at 4.30, it's Fairfield and Mount Vernon, and at 6 o'clock, it's Carmi and Evansville Day. But Travis, I think you and me think that Carmi harrisburg game on Monday night could really be your championship game. I mean, I don't think it's going to be tough for anybody to run the table in this year's tournament, but man, those, those I think the two best teams going at it Monday night. Yeah, they're the two hottest teams. Carmi's on a you know, four- to five-game win streak. Harrisburg has played, you know, Heron, the, one of the best teams in South Illinois, to a very close loss. They barely lost a Mass Act. They beat Menton, so they beat some of the best teams and had you know one, two, three point losses to some of the other best teams. So those are probably the best two teams in the uh, tournament this year. So earlier this week, I had the chance to chat with a couple of area broadcasters of teams that are going to be in the CIT, and uh, so we'll uh, we'll step aside and, and listen to those conversations. First one, this is with Sherman Owen, the radio voice of the Harrisburg Bulldogs. All right, being joined by the voice of the Harrisburg Bulldogs on WEBQ, Sherman Owen. Sherman, thanks for your time today. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, Sherman, I, I got the chance to see the Bulldogs for the first time at the EHT. Uh, I believe they were 4-7, and 4-6 and six going into the EHT, but they have really turned things on uh, since that tournament. They've won three in a row. I know you guys play here in this Friday, but, man, the Bulldogs are really getting hot at the right time. They are, and uh, I've, I've talked to Coach Andy Fernbacher about this very thing. He, he talked about the fact that he has had so little time these boys even through the summer because of baseball and things like that uh but he really feels like things are starting to gel with this team uh they're starting to buy into the system and you, you can really see it on the floor uh that uh, you know people are, are doing the things that they should be doing uh, they're playing really good defense right now and here lately they're starting to get some shots to fall the big thing for us going forward we've got to get healthy well, he's got the luxury of having one of the best players in Southern Illinois in Cameron Andy. Man, he was fun to watch there at the EHT. He's going to be fun to watch next week at the CIT. Just talk about him and, and him over the past couple of years being a sophomore last year and now a junior this year, just how much his game has evolved and how he's just turned out to be one of the best players in the area. He has. I tell you what, Cam is just a, a great kid. Uh, he's fun to be around. Uh, just the fact that how he has elevated his game uh, for us, I mean, he is a tremendous defensive player for us. He's constantly getting balls slapped away and things like that. But his his offensive side of his game has gotten so much better. And those three games that he had against uh, uh, Murfreesboro and uh, and uh, Anna Jonesboro, and then the one against uh, I'm trying to think what the other Benton. Yeah, mm-hmm. should should never forget about Benton, but. Those three games, I think he had 28, 21, and 31 
in those three games against those three really good ball clubs. Looking at what you guys did earlier in the season, you mentioned the win against Murphy's Bro last week. You guys lost to Murphy earlier in the year, uh, losing to a couple other teams like Goreville and Redbud. Kind of what in your eyes as a broadcaster have you seen differently from this Bulldog team from the beginning of the year to where they are now? At the beginning of the year, they hadn't bought into the new system. I mean, when you've got players that's come up through the Bulldog system like they have uh, playing middle school ball and, and even some grade school, things like that, it always seemed like that everything uh, was Randy smith Peter system. And he had ways that he liked to teach these boys as they were coming up. Uh, Andy Fernbacher's system is close to that, but it's got some different things that he he uh, works on a little bit better. Andy is a fundamental type coach, and he expects a lot out of his players. Uh, we didn't see the buy-in we did at the beginning of the season. Everybody's getting to know everybody. Now this team is gelling. They're playing really well together. I, I've noticed just the way that Cam Andy and Miles Crank and, you know, the players like that are really getting the points per game and things like that. You, you would think that they have played each other, uh, played on the same team with each other for 20 years. They know what each other is going to do. And right now it's getting really, really, uh, really, really good as far as on the offensive side of that. They they work so well together. And then you you put in the defensive uh, prowess of some others. Andrew Unthink's playing an outstanding season for him. He's, he's the last three games, I think he's averaged 15 rebounds a game. So the kid is just outstanding underneath. Uh, yeah, he uses his size, but he knows how to tip a ball into his hand. And uh, he just does that so well. And then you've got the other players that we have that, Everybody's just playing really well together. Talking to Sherman Owen, the voice of the Harrisburg Bulldogs on 102.3 WEBQ. Sherman, I feel this year CIT is the first time in a while that I think all five teams have a legit chance to win the championship. From what you know from these other four teams, who do you think will give Harrisburg the toughest battle next week? Well, I think by far you're going to be looking at Carmichael White County. I think the the Maroon Dogs have uh, got something to prove this year with the, the crew that they have. I think uh, they ran into an issue with one team at the at the El Dorado Holiday Tournament. If that hadn't happened, who knows what would have happened with Carmi uh, at the EHT. Uh, they're a very talented ball team. they got a couple of youngsters, and this is going to be a team, I think, uh, that's going to be uh, a really stout ball club to handle uh, for the next couple, three years of their own tournament. Well, and Monday's game could very well be the championship. Harrisburg and Carmi coming your way Monday night at 7 o'clock. Sherman, thanks for your time. We'll see you next week for the 43rd annual Carmi White County Invitational Tournament. I really appreciate it. Can't wait to go to Carmi next week. We'll take our second break of the day. When we come back, we'll chat with one of the broadcasters for the Mount Vernon Wildcats. Alan Buck, as well as the voice of the Fairfield Mules, Drew Pound, right here on the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROI, and AM 1460. Welcome back to the Saturday Morning Sports Show here on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROI, and AM 1460. Cole Carter and Travis Black with you. Haley Winkleman across the hall getting us on the air. A big thanks to Sherman Owen for chatting with me earlier this week about the Harrisburg Bulldogs. Travis, we talked about Harrisburg and how they've seen this year. There's no question that game on Monday between Harrisburg and Carmi going to be a dandy. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. I mean, two best teams in the tournament. We've been talking about it. You know, Cameron Andy can go for 30 at any time. And, you know, Carmi's played great defense lately on, you know, solo scores. They held Parker Price to, you know, just about 11 points. And they held Tyler Myers to 36, which is really good for that's, how that kid can a score. Lot. That is saying a lot for <laughs> how well that kid can score the basketball. And they held, you know, Eric Rogers for the first half to only four points. I mean, he kind of got hot from three there in the second half and ended with 28. But that's really no fault of their own. They did the best they could. They got a hand up, and he just caught fire. But Carmine's done a great job at playing defense against, you know, those really top scorers in Southern Illinois and also, you know, Southern Indiana for Tyler Myers. But – uh, Cameron Andy is going to be another tough test for him, and I think they'll rise and shine to the occasion. Well, last year the Mount Vernon Wildcats, they won the CIT. They ran the table, went 4-0, and but not sure if they'll be the, able to do the same thing this year. They graduated a lot of seniors, but with that, we'll bring up a conversation I had earlier this week with the radio voice of the Wildcats, Alan Buck. 
being joined by part of the voice of the Mount Vernon Wildcats on 106.7 WNVI Posey County Radio, the color commentator for Mount Vernon basketball, Alan Buck. Alan, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. Looking forward to uh, the tournament next week, and uh, it'll be fun to talk about it a little bit before we get there. Well, Alan, last year, Mount Vernon, they won the tournament. They went 4-0 in the CIT, but this year's team, a little bit different. They graduated a couple of seniors. What's this year looked like so far for the Wildcats? Well, you, um, you're you very understated there, Cole. They lost six seniors off of last year's team, which uh, that did win the tournament, as you said. Those losses, though, uh, included two four-year starters in Leo Hostetter and Caleb Dosher, who, by the way, as a sophomore, set the tournament record for three-point field goals made in one tournament. Um, so that's, you know, uh, that was something that he did a couple years ago. I don't know what that, I think it was 14 or, or 15, something like that. So, but anyway, this year, this team has no seniors. We return one starter from last year, and junior Nico Burnett. Uh, sixth man Jackson Flowers, also a junior, comes back. Uh, we have two players who were JV players totally last year in junior Logan Dukowitz and sophomore Jack Campbell. And we have two freshman starters, Nash Hostetter and Brady Schickel. And that's the six man rotation that uh, Mount Vernon goes with primarily. Uh, they are, we're three and eight overall right now, but four of those eight losses were by a total of 17 points. And but for some youthful mistakes early in the games uh we could very easily be seven and four or eight and three instead of three and eight but that's that's what you, what happens with a young with a young club and coach is aware of that but he wants to win every time out so this is a little bit of a tough year for him well you mentioned the record three and eight we'll get to that here in a minute but I want to talk about nico burnett saw him last year played quarterback from mount vernon when i called games for gibson southern He's one heck of an athlete, a great basketball player as well, but I can imagine graduating all those seniors last year, there's quite a bit of weight on his shoulders to try to lead this team to some wins. You're exactly right. You hit the nail on the head. And those of us who have watched Nico as a, as a starter on uh, football and basketball since he was a freshman, we expect an awful lot out of him. And it's sometimes it isn't fair because he's, what, 16, 17 years old. But Nico's the kind of a kid, he just looks at it, it's business as usual. This is my job. This is what, I, is what I'm here to do. And he doesn't get as all hot and bothered, and he's willing to shoulder those responsibilities and, and feels that that's what he, what he should do for his team. Uh, he does lead the team in scoring with 17.4 per game. Uh, Clowers is, is second with 13.8. Uh, Nico leads in rebounding, followed closely by Jackson. Uh, they're at six and a half and five seven. Uh, Brady Schickel chips in at four and a half a game. So, but so yeah, uh, Nico shoulders an awful lot of that responsibility. If it's late in the game, I, I hate to give this away because I know the coaches are going to listen to your show. <laughs> but if it's late in the game and we need a basket, Nico's probably going to take it. And it, and not necessarily we draw up a play or anything. It's just in the flow of the game. He's going to he's gonna take it, and not as a gunner, but just as a, hey, guys, let you know, I'm going to do the job for you. So uh, he's a pleasure to watch, I'll tell you that. You mentioned the record just 3-8 and eight this season, but when you cross the river going from Illinois to Indiana in terms of the competition you see, whether it's high school basketball or high school football, even high school baseball, uh, especially in the Evansville area, the competition really steps up. Obviously, you guys, you face teams in the PAC and the SIAC, so that's your Gibson Southerns, your Heritage Hills, your North Posies, your Central, Rice Memorial, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, it's so often that we see Indiana teams come over to Carmi for the CIT and have success. Well, you're, you're right to some extent. Our our big thing, our tallest starters, we have a couple of 6'3s. I think we have three six threes, a 6'2", and a and a five nine on tippy toes, so when we meet a team that's got a, a a giraffe in the middle, that gives us a lot of trouble. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. And that tournament, I found out last year was it last year the fortieth or maybe forty first or something. But that is the best. I've been in tournaments all over Southern Indiana and 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 some in Illinois where uh, they're they're just not run properly. That one is run fantastic. 
uh, they they just do a great job there. So I, I can't say enough good things about it. Well, Alan, nothing against you Hoosiers, but we do things right over here in Southern Illinois. <laughs> well, I, I do like the hospitality room. You guys feed us well, and that's that, that's my, hey, if you feed me well, I'll say nice things about you all day long. <laughs> well, Alan, we do appreciate you calling in today. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week for the 43rd Annual Carmichael White County Invitational. Cole, thanks for this opportunity, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, Alan. That's Alan Buck, broadcaster for the Mount Vernon Wildcats, as they are coming over across the river for the Carmichael White County Invitational Tournament that starts on Monday. And with that, we'll welcome in another area broadcaster, the voice of the Fairfield Mules on 104.9 WFIW, a very good friend of mine, Drew Pouton. Drew, thanks for your time today. Yeah, for sure, good sir. Always down to talk some high school basketball. Well, Drew, it's been a strange year for Scott McElravey and the Fairfield Mules. They've been a powerhouse, especially in the CIT, for the past decade or so. But they had a rough start to the year with some tough games on the schedule. But they've played some better basketball of late, including an overtime loss to Benton last Saturday and a five-point loss to Alney earlier this week. Now we're recording this before the big matchup between my Bulldogs and your Mules. But kind of what's been different about this Mule team in their past few outings? Um, honestly, Cole, it all started with the loss to Lawrenceville. They, they, um, talking to the assistant coach, Cody, Cody Bailey, they've been calling this stretch the gauntlet all year. They played in Lawrenceville, played at home against Benton, Richland County, and then they'll play Carmi at home to, on a Friday. But the team has not given up. I mean, against Lawrenceville, the game was really close. It was like 15 to 11 going into the second. Lawrenceville ran away with it. The body language of the Mules just wasn't there. Um, and then that all changed playing against Benson. I mean, they came out of Benson. Benson punched them in the mouth in the third quarter. They were right there the entire game and lost uh, a very close one. I think it was 50 to 47. But I want to highlight uh, Rich, the Richland County game. That was the best game of basketball that I've seen them play all year long. I mean, they were they were down by maybe 10 to 12 points. They kind of felt like they were out of striking range, but they were never out of the game. And they were without one of their best players, Lane Tucker, who has a sickness, who I'm hoping he gets a chance to play Friday against Carmine White County. Um, but I, I think that you know, Fairfield, this tough stretch of games has proven this team. You know, they're, they were a young team going into the season. They've done a lot of gelling. You know, I was very impressed with what I saw from Fairfield in the EHT. Uh, losing to Ada Jonesboro in a game that they led the entirety of the game. It got away from them in the fourth quarter, but then they bounced back. They beat Gallatin. They beat West Frankfurt. They beat Hamco to bring home the consolation championship. Then they come back the following week and beat Everett's County by 30 points. But, uh, Drew, I know you weren't there at the EHT, but... I really thought it showed a lot of maturity from Scott McElwavy's crew to bounce back from that first loss on an opening day, pull off three straight, and bring home a trophy in a tournament that nobody thought they'd had any business being there. Yeah, this team is a lot different from the beginning of the year. It started off with, give Eric Rogers the ball, get out of the way. But now you see the emergence of Justice Stagg, who is one of the best passers in high school that I've ever seen. He has a good three ball. His handles are okay, He's uh, but again, that passing is second to none. Lane Tucker and Landon Harrison are the bigs that can shoot. They're about 6'3 each. Look so much alike that I call Lane Landon and Landon Har- Landon Lane. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy um but this team is not the same team that it was even at the eht i mean they came out against richland county with an offensive identity they slowed it down they ran good plays and eric rogers are asking more of him on the defensive side so that opens up shots for everybody they're saying eric go guard are the best player on the other team he's doing it and he's holding uh, opposing best players to you know, under 15 points in every time that I've seen it. So this team, like I mentioned, not the same team from the beginning of the year, not even the same team at the EHT. This team is improving, they're gelling, and they're young. They're going to lose Rodgers and Duckworth at the end of the year, but Fairfield's going to be something nasty next year. Well, you mentioned Rodgers, and this fall he was a, a do-it-all man on the football field. It's been the same case on the basketball court, especially earlier in the year. We saw him at the EHT. He was an all-tournament team player. Man, that kid can can really score the basketball and do so with ease. I mean, he's an easy 22, 25 points per game kind of guy. Yeah, he uh, went into the fourth quarter against Richland County. It was probably a 10-point game, and he had six points going into the fourth fourth and scored 11. So 
I think that he he picks his moments because he'll go out and he'll start hot. The mules will get a lead, and then he'll kind of fade, and so does the offense. So I think Eric is kind of slowly giving his teammates a chance to kind of hit some shots, see who's hot. But whenever there's nobody else, you know that Eric Rodgers can get you 10, 12 puck. 12, 10 to 12 points in a matter of minutes so he is their offense still he's not the main score unless you know they absolutely need him to be they'll go to different options before they go to eric but when it goes to eric just know that he's a bucket no matter what all right drew we appreciate your time we'll see you next week when the mules come to town for the 43rd annual Cartmy white county invitational tournament yes sir see you guys next week thank you that's Drew Pounton, voice of the Fairfield Mules on 104.9 WFIW. We're going to take our final break of the day here on the Saturday Morning Sports Show. When we come back, we'll wrap things up with our Terrible 10 picks. Don't go anywhere. It's the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL and 93.3 WROY AM 1460. Might want to turn the microphone on. That might help. This is the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL and 93.3 WROI AM 1460. A couple of things going on uh, in the area today over at Washington School here in town. Uh, the Carmi Bulldog Wrestling Team is hosting a, a big varsity tournament. A lot of teams there, so uh, go on down to watch that. Also over in El Dorado, the Lady Bulldogs begin play in the Lady Eagle Classic. Here in about 15 minutes, they'll take on Goreville. If they win, they'll play Monday at 11.30. If they lose, they'll play Monday at 8.30. Uh, they're playing that tournament all. Oh, they're playing today, Monday, and then I believe they'll play again on Wednesday if they win on Monday. Okay, time to get into our terrible 10 pickums for this weekend. Travis, again, beat me last week. He went 7-3. and three. I went 5-5 five and five in the standings. Travis is 36 and 14. I'm at 500 at 25 and 25. But uh, when you hear our college basketball picks for uh, this week, I'm trying to screw Travis over. I'm trying to say where he can't pick uh, the bigger school or the higher seed. We're going unseeded teams that you probably have never seen play basketball before. But here we go. Okay. Starting with the NFL playoff games, a couple of games tonight, three games tomorrow, one game Monday. Travis, first one, Seahawks, Niners. Who do you got? I'm going to go 49ers, the best team in the NFL. And Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I, Seattle, obviously, had a good season making the playoffs, but San Fran is one of the hottest teams in football. Another game tonight, L.A. Chargers at the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to go Jacksonville here. Uh, L.A. will not have one of the best receivers in Mike Williams, which means Justin Herbert is not going to be to be able to spread things out as much as he wants to. Jacksonville is also one of the hottest teams in the league. They're playing at home. I'm going Jaguars. I'm also going to go Jaguars. That Mike Williams injury is really crucial for the Chargers offense. And so on to the playoff games that are tomorrow. First one being Dolphins at the Bills. Uh, Dolphins starting their third string quarterback. If, if, if you really ask me, this should be the Steelers playing in this spot, but that's that's neither here or there. Uh, I'm, I'm going Bills by about three touchdowns. Yeah, I'm also going to go the Bills. Uh, they are they have been extremely hot to end that close the year out. And so now things get a little bit interesting in terms of tomorrow afternoon and then tomorrow night and Monday night. Uh, tomorrow, the, the 4 o'clock game, the New York Giants at the Minnesota Vikings. This is going to be a tough one. And, and Travis, you as a Vikings fan, it's probably hard to pick. Uh, I'm gonna have you pick first on this one. Who You're do you think? Have me pick. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna be a homer here and go Vikings. Okay. But I think that's gonna be the upset of the weekend. So, so Kirk Cousins in that in that unless he's in the one o'clock window does not play the best. So you're picking the Vikings, but you think the Giants are gonna win? I think if I think if any upset's gonna occur out of you know the higher seeded playoff teams, that would be the one. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, see, this is why I never put the Steelers in the terrible 10 pickings because a couple years ago I would pick the Steelers to win. They would lose, so I started picking the Steelers to lose for them to win. And it just it, – it, Conflict of interest. It, it, it was not a good combination. So uh, beyond the point, I'm going to go Vikings here at home. I just – I think – you believe in 12 o'clock, I think, Kirk? I think people are, are overlooking what the Vikings have done. They're still a very good team. They won, what, 13 games this year? 11-0 and in one-score games. Yeah. But they had a negative point differential, which is not normally a 13-win team. I, I'm choosing quarterback play here. I'm going Kirk Cousins over Daniel Jones. That, okay. That's the ultimate line for me. Uh, the Sunday night game tomorrow night, it is the Ravens at the Bengals. 
Uh, Lamar Jackson is not going to play. Ravens might be down to their third string quarterback. Give me Joe Burr and the Bengals. I'm also going to go Bengals. Ravens without Lamar Jackson have been struggling offensively. So there was no point of me putting NFL picks on nope. here because me and Travis have all the same ones. Well, but Monday we'll night, this, this, this could this be... One, this might be the difference. Okay, I'll, I'll have you pick first. Cowboys at the Buccaneers Monday night. Cowboys have been on a three-game struggle. The Bucks have Tom Brady, even though they're probably the worst team. I'm going to stick with the Bucks. Okay, good, because I want to pick Cowboys here. I, I think, again, Cowboys are one of those teams that, that are good, but people just... Hate them because they are the Cowboys. Yes. I get that, but uh, they're they're still a solid team. Give me the Cowboys here to win in Tampa. All right, on to our very interesting college basketball games for today. Uh, highly anticipated matchups here. National television, the games that everybody's going to watch. Uh-huh. Here I mean, we go on ESPN, <laughs> the Ocho. <laughs> First one. Idaho at Eastern Washington. Travis, who do you got? I'm going to go Eastern Washington. You're going to go Eastern Washington. They are number one in the Big Sky Conference. Oh, you, did you seriously look up this stuff during the it, break? I did, and I watched you do the same thing. So uh, we're, oh, we're I thinking looked, the same way. I looked at the wavelength. point spread. That's what I looked at. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, and Eastern Washington was the favorite, and it's like an eight and a half point favorite. So I will go with are they the Eagles, Eastern yeah, Washington. Eastern Washington. Okay. Eagles. Eastern Washington. Okay. Second college football game today. Northern Colorado at Portland State. <laughs> Who do you got, Travis? I'm going to go Portland State. You're going Portland State. Yeah. Oh, Northern you're... Colorado is the bottom of that conference, by the way. I did a horrible job picking these games then. All right, I'm going Portland State. Okay, make Wake Forest at Boston College. I'm going to take Wake Forest. Okay, here I'm going Boston College. It's a one-and-a-half point favorite. Uh, is Wake Forest, but it's in Boston, so I'm going to go Boston College here. Last game, Wright State at Milwaukee. Do you even know where Wright State is? I don't think I do. I, did, I, couldn't, I couldn't pick it out on the map. <laughs> <laughs> you could give me the map of the town it was in. I still couldn't put, pinpoint it. But I'm going to go Milwaukee. Uh, uh, oh. I'm going to go Wright State. It's an even spread that game is, so even it could spread. go either way. I, I will go Wright State here because i got to get some ground against you. <laughs> All right, well, there's our terrible ten pickums for this weekend. And what do you what, what conference is this? Are it's the Horizon Conference. The Horizon Conference. Milwaukee is six and one in the conference. Wright State is three and four. I have faith in Wright State. What are they? The the Knights is that their mascot? Wright State Wrights, Staters. I don't know what their mascot is, but anyway, that's our terrible ten pickum for this weekend. A lot of interesting games in the NFL going on with the playoffs starting off to, uh, this afternoon. Um, but yeah, and also again, later on, or going on today at Washington School is that wrestling tournament and the Lady Bulldogs play uh, in the Lady Eagle Classic this weekend and next week early on. And the Bulldogs are in the CIT next week, Monday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Going to be a lot of good basketball at McDougal Lever, so get on down uh, every night except Wednesday if you want to watch some good games. But uh, Travis, going to be a fun week of, of Bulldog basketball next week. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be some great basketball next week. And again, Carmine will play Harrisburg on Monday, Mount Vernon on Thursday, Fairfield on Friday, and Evansville Day on Saturday. That's going to wrap things up for us this morning here on the Saturday Morning Sports Show. A big thanks to Haley Winkleman across the hall getting us on the air. For Travis Black, I'm Cole Carter. Have a great weekend, sports fans.